Hi there. In this video, I'm going to cover how to download and upload images into Firebase's storage feature using Python. I don't like to waste any time, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going right over to Firebase, and I'll hit enter, so firebase.google.com. We will go to the console. If you don't already have an account, just sign up and then go to console here. Okay. And once this pops up, we're going to create a new project. Okay, so I'll hit add project right here. And I'll get a project name, so I'll say YouTube tutorial. All right, continue. I'm going to hit continue again. I'll just hit default account. All right, our project is ready. It should automatically take us there. Good. Okay, first thing I want to do in this main screen that I get I'm going to say it's for web, okay? I just need to configure it for the web. Um, it doesn't actually have to be used for the web, but this is how you can do it. All right, a nickname for my app. I'll say uh, YouTube vid. Okay, register app. Firebase hosting is for websites. I'm not doing anything with the website right now. Add the Firebase SDK. So this doesn't really look um, like Python. This is some um, JavaScript um, code. But actually, you just need this right here. So all this data is what you'll use to configure Firebase in Python, and then you can interact with the actual storage system. Okay, so I'm just going to copy all of this. You see it's just got a reference to basically your app on, on Firebase. This is not sensitive information. This is basically just like an identifier for your app, okay? So it's okay to put this on client-side code. All right, now before I can actually get to coding in Python, I need to make sure I have one module installed, and that module is called Pyrebase, all right? So if you don't have it already, say sudo pip or pip3. I'm using Python 3, so I'll say sudo pip3 install Pyrebase, okay? P-Y-R-E-B-A-S-E. -E. Hit enter, put in your password, and it'll install everything you need um, for Pyrebase. Okay, we're good to go. Now I can do like import Pyrebase in my Python code. So I'll do just that. I'm over in an empty project. I have um, main.py right here, which is completely blank and uh, my image.jpg. All right, so it's a picture of me, looking pretty good. Okay, first thing I need to do is import Pyrebase. All right, it's as easy as that. Now I'll create a new variable called config, and it's gonna be a dictionary. So empty brackets, hit enter, and now you can just paste everything that you copied just a moment ago, okay? You need to do a little bit of formatting here. All of these fields need to be strings. Okay, throw in a double quote, and we're good. There, now we've got our config dictionary set up. And what's left to do is initialize um, our connection to Firebase. So I'll say Firebase, this will just be the name of my connection. I'll call Pyrebase.initialize app, and then all you have to do is pass the config, okay? So I pass the configuration that basically says which Firebase project to connect to. I've initialized it using Pyrebase.initialize app and passing the config. And now I can get a reference to the storage feature of Firebase by just saying storage is firebase.storage. Call that. Now that we've got a, a reference to Firebase storage, let's go back and set it up inside of Firebase. Okay, I'm back at my project here. I don't need to do anything else, so I'll click cancel. And now let me go over to the left and click on um, storage. All right. We need to initialize storage in Firebase, so I'll say get started right here. And I'll just hit next. This is telling me what my default rules are. So who can upload and download files. And right here, this is basically saying the server that I want to use. Just leave this at the default. It'll take a second to create the actual storage bucket for you. Okay, now I'm going to go over to rules and do something that you should never do in production. But I'm just going to allow any kind of read and write to my uh, storage bucket, okay? Rules let you define who's allowed to read and write to every path inside of your Firebase storage, okay? And I'm just going to allow read and write for everything for the sake of demonstration, okay? So I'll publish my new rules where I've allowed read and write for all paths. Okay, now I can upload and download any images I want without authenticating my request. All right, so back over to Python code. Here I am. Now I can say storage.child. And now right here, this is where you put um, path on cloud. So basically, Firebase storage is a 
file system of sorts, and you can just write a path where you want to save or um, download an image from. So maybe I say path on cloud is inside of a folder called images, and it's like foo.jpg. So this is basically saying, I want a reference to the foo.jpg image inside of the images folder in Firebase Cloud Storage, okay? And now I'll just call dot put, and then this is path local, okay? So path local is just a reference to where the image is on your local system. Mine is right in my same directory, so my image. So I can just say my underscore image dot JPEG. Okay, so what I've done here is I've got a reference to Firebase Storage. I'm referencing a child inside of Firebase Storage that's at the location, path on cloud here, of the images folder and the name is foo.jpg. Great, so I've got a reference to that. And now I'm putting, using put, an image from my local system into that spot where I referenced. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, we can go back to Firebase Storage and if I hit files right here, there's nothing here because I haven't run it yet. So I'll go back to Python and if I run this using um, control R, you'll see nothing here. And then it should say process finished with exit code zero. So it's finished, it's done. It ran through all this code, it connected to Firebase. And now if I go back here and I refresh, I should see that my file is now popped up on my folder inside of cloud storage. Boom, I've created a new folder called images, right? And inside of images, I have foo.jpg. If I click on that, you can see, bam, there's me. I did it. I put in a file to cloud storage in what, it's been like five minutes or something and 10 lines of code. I mean, it's just so incredibly easy. It's amazing. Okay, so now that you know how to put a file in storage, by the way, I could put in more directories here like images slash um, Eric slash foo.jpg and then I'd put it in a subfolder of the images folder on the cloud. All right, so I hope that um, sort of directory tree makes sense to you. Now that we've um, put an image there, what if we want to download an image? I can do something very similar. I'll say storage.child, and again, path on cloud. So which image from the cloud I want to download, basically. And I'll just download my foo.jpg image because I've already put one there. And then I can say dot download, and now I just say another local path. So where do I want it? Maybe I'll put it in like test download .jpg. Okay, I'm gonna comment out this because I don't really need to put another image back in Firebase. And I'll run this one more time. Give it a second while it works. And also I uploaded a pretty big image. And you can see right here, what's here that wasn't there before, test download .jpg. I'll double click it and there's my image. I just downloaded that from cloud storage in one line of code. I mean, God, it's awesome. So you can see here's the original that I uploaded and then I downloaded again and this is what I got back. So same picture, looks great. 10 lines of code, how easy was that, okay? So now you know how to connect to Firebase using the Firebase module and upload using the put function and then also download using the download function. Okay, hope that was helpful to you guys. Stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe if you like it, and thanks for watching.